Good evening. I'm Deputy Mayor Brent Kowalczyk, sitting in for uh, Mayor Karen Smythe this evening, who is under the weather, and uh, she will be joining us via Zoom. Um, uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. And Pledge of Allegiance. Recording in progress. The United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This is uh, Village of Trustees meeting for January 9th, 2023. First meeting of the new year. Um, kick it off real quick with the minutes of December 1st and December 12th. Um, I'm assuming all the board members read and reviewed this. Um, are there, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes as written. Um, do I hear a second? I second that. Are there any additions, deletions, or revisions to the minutes? Hearing none, uh, make a, I'd like to make, a, make the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Uh, Abstain? I wasn't there. All right. And before we get to regular business, I would like to make a motion to go into executive session. And this is for uh, a matter of legal personnel matter. Um, do I hear a second on that? I second that. Oh. Charlie, second. That's, that's, that's it. Employment history, medical history. Personnel matter. That's it. What form? Employment history, medical history? It's employment. Um, so we should adjourn to another room, I guess. Um, so we'll go into the, the clerk's office. I can make a motion to uh, return to regular session and the uh, executive session. Uh, do I have a second? A second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, as a result of this uh, executive session, I do have a resolution. And Madam Clerk, can may I have a resolution number? Number one, 2023 number one. The Village of Red Hook Village Board Resolution number 2023 number one, dated January 9th. 2023, whereas the Village of Red Hook wishes to resolve an employment matter that has risen with a prior employee, parenthetical, the employee, whereas Employment Council for the Village of Red Hook has presented a proposed agreement and release of claims to resolve the matter in its entirety for the sum of $2,010.00. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and the village board do hereby authorize the execution and payment of the proposed agreement and release of claims to resolve the matter upon acceptance of the proposed agreement as amended and release of claims by the employee. Be it further resolved that the mayor and the board, the village board do hereby authorize the appropriate village administrator within the same period prescribed by law to make the payment as set forth pursuant to the terms of the agreement and release. Be it further resolved that the employee has provided or shall provide to an employment council for the village of Red Hook a satisfactory release and or other appropriate documentation to effectuate the resolution of this matter. And I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution as presented. Do I have a second, please? <laughs> I'll second that motion. And any discussion? And I will ask for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Hearing none, the resolution has passed. Now to get on with regular business. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the appointment of the Honorable Thomas Manf Mansfield as, I believe he's what, Associate Justice? 
or assistant justice? He's the associate judge. Associate. Yeah, and the reason why we need to reappoint him is because his term was for one year. And that term, uh, I believe we appointed him in September. And so we need to reappoint him. And I was going to propose a motion to reappoint the Honorable Judge, the Honorable Thomas Mansfield as associate judge for the village court. Um, if that is acceptable to all of you as a motion. And I'll second that motion. Um, and the, the term, the terms of this, uh, the length of term is for another year till next September. Yeah. What did you think, Jen? Did you, did you think we should do it till April when we appoint everyone or? Yeah, for reorg. Another year. The reorg, so the end of March. Uh, or whatever time we do the re reorganization of the village. Regular. I think we do the reorganization at the first April me at the first the meeting in April. Right. Uh, so perhaps we can make it through the end of April. So the term will run through March thirty first. Mm, I I do it through the do it through the end of April. Okay. It's time to reappoint him. All right. Everybody got that? <laughs> yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. The second item on the agenda is the police life insurance policy renewal. Did you want to go into a little bit of this, Karen? Uh, we, are, we are required by contract to provide life insurance to, for our police officers. Um, and this is a renewal of that uh, life insurance policy. So I was going to propose a motion to approve the renewal of the police life insurance policy with principal. I know that Ray has, uh, Ray, I think we used to use a different company and Ray has, uh, Ray found this one last year. Yeah. If I remember correctly. Yes, that's correct. And they were significantly. Um, Less expensive, the same amount of insurance. Uh, same amount of insurance. So first of all, thank you, Ray. Um, and um, so again, I'd just like to make the motion to renew this, this policy with principal. And do I have a second on the motion? I'll second that. Charlie Lang seconds the motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Second item on the agenda is the resolution of village personnel, the call-in policy. Um, do you want me to just go ahead and read, read the resolution, Karen, or do you want to go into a little detail on you this? Can, you can do that, and I can explain sort of where this came from. Okay. So this would be resolution 2023 number two, I would assume. Resolution to establish the call-in policy for non-union village employees, whereas there are times when village employees are called in to work outside of normal work hours as an exception for an emergency or for a small amount of work, whereas the non-union village employees are not covered by an employment agreement. Now, therefore, be it resolved that when a non-union village employee is called in to work as an exception, an emergency or small amount of work, the employee will receive a minimum of one hour of pay at the employee's standard rate. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve resolution 2023 number two. Um, do I hear a second? I uh, second that. Seconded by Trustee Dwyer McNulty. Any discussion? So just to share a little of where this came from, um, it was primarily um, for the meter reader who would sometimes be called in for reading one or two, um, not, on, not on the regular reading, but if it was a closing or something like that. And to make it where, you know, to come in for 15 minutes um, seemed a little unfair. Uh, apparently there was, a, there was a, an unwritten agreement, which I am not a big fan of unwritten agreements. So um, it, this seemed like a logical, um, a logical policy to ad adopt. 
both of our um, both of our union agreements have a call in a minimum call in time, and so an hour seemed like a logical roundup um, for the non union village employees. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Resolution twenty twenty three number two is approved. Next item on the agenda is the 2022-2023 seasonal towing on call services. Madam Mayor, would you like to um, go into a little detail on this one? Um, I, yeah, I can fill in a Jen, Jen can also help out. Um, in that we have our, our seasonal parking rules um, where you are not to, you're not allowed to park um, from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. And if someone is parked there, um, that um, you, you can get towed. And so it made sense to do a um, request for quote for, for towing services. And Jen put, Jen put that out, and we got, I think, four responses, Jen? You have the uh, folder, yeah, I believe. Oh, I do have the folder. Yes, I do. Sorry, I was looking in the wrong spot. Um, one, two, three, four. We have four responses. Three of them actually said they were not interested in being considered for the contract. The one who did say they were interested in being considered was H&N Towing Enterprises, who we have used um, for many years in the past as well. Uh, Jen, did you make a copy of their, um, do others have a copy of, of their proposal? I don't believe so. Okay, so the towing fee, uh, which includes three days of free storage, um, is $175 per vehicle. And the per, per diem storage fee after initial three days, which is included above, is $50 per day per vehicle. Um, I, I actually think, based on other towing fees I've seen, that that's relatively reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, I would propose that we accept this um, seasonal towing on-call service. So I can make a motion that we approve um, the estimate from H&M Towing Enterprises for towing of um, parked cars during our, what is it, seasonal seasonal parking rules the fee $175 per vehicle first three days are free days after for storage um, after day three would be $50 a day per vehicle um, do I have a second on the motion I'll second that motion Charlie Lang seconds the motion any discussion is this a cost that's passed on to the person that owns the car yes and that's part of the local law and is it a local, um, like, where are they located? Where would the lot be that they'd be stored at? Do we know? Yes, I do. Uh, they, they are local. Uh, I, that's a good question. I don't this know. is local law number four of 619-2014, section 190-28A and 190-28B. But where does the car go? Probably goes to H&M, wherever they're located. Right, where's that was my question. I was just wondering if it was um, how close oh, they are for, if someone needs to get their, to them. Their address, their address appears to be 7309 South Broadway. Oh, very convenient. They're, Good. They're in okay. Red Hook. They're, I think it, that's the town mm -hmm. uh, just farther down Route 9. Great. Thank you. So we had a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is the language access MIG grant update. Um, this, this was just an opportunity to share. Um, we received a MIG grant uh, uh, from uh, Dutchess County. Um, I think we formally were awarded it in October. Um, and uh, and Melcorca, you can pipe in when I when I forget things. I 
just wanted to share with you that we are moving ahead. The first thing, and the language access grant was to add um, language translation services in a variety of different areas. The first thing that we're going to do, and you'll see, you will have seen that in the vouchers, is called Recite Me, which goes on the website, which means that for the, the website can be translated into a lot of languages. It's not it's not just one language. It it can if you look on the county website, um, you'll see a little Recite Me in the top right corner, and if you click on that, it, it gives you a whole list of all of the um, all of the different languages it can be translated into. Um, we thought that was a that was again part of what we had asked for, um, and we applied for this grant in combination with the library, and so. Um, if this is for two years um, for our website and the library's website. So we're excited to move that forward. I'm hoping by the end of January we will have got it up and running on our website. It also includes um, the police um, business cards um, with uh, Spanish on the back. Um, it also includes um, a language line where um, we can call, we, and that includes um, the police officers as well as the village clerk, um, can call a phone number to have immediate translation services. And it's not uniquely Spanish, it's, it's a variety of languages. Um, and then there will be other translation services as well as a, um, a study of what would be the most impactful for us to do. So hiring a consultant, consulting service to come and understand the village, understand the language needs, and, and give us a report as to what would be the most impactful from a, from a language access standpoint. Um, so just wanted to let you know where we were on that. Um, Mel Corker, do you have anything to add? No, that was, that was a very good summation. But I'm, I'm excited to, to continue forward and I, I am very grateful to both Mel, Mel Corka and Amy Smith for getting us to this point. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is budget adjustments, and this will be in the form of a resolution, resolution number three of 2023, January 9th, 2023 resolution, whereas the village board desires to amend the general fund budget to reflect current information and expenses, whereas the village board the following budget adjustments are requested to be made, and these are all from the general fund. Um, line item 2706, grants from local government, current budget, um, we have not, nothing in and there. We're adjusting it to add $21,700, and this would be- That's a revenue line. That, that'd be for the revenue. Yeah. So that's for this year's portion of the 42755 dollar mig grant and then we have also adding to the revenue i believe the mayor's contractual expenses on the current budget we've budgeted a thousand dollars for we are adding one hundred dollars bringing the revive that's an expense that's an ex Sorry. so that hundred dollars will go for the new york conference of mayors legislative session re registration um street maintenance Current budget of 20248 we're adding to the revenue side, to the expense, yeah, expense side. All, all expenses. In, we're increasing the expense budget for the, okay. for the line items. All right. So we're adding $4,495, make bringing that budget uh, revision to $24,743, and this is to cover spring work. Um, the snow, current budget is $5,000, expense of $2,000 has been added, total of $7,000, and this is for repairs that are needed. And also, this is line 86764, provisions of public service, the big language access grant of 21000 that's, that's the line item that um, Michelle and I came up with to put all of the costs for the language access grant. All right, and then that's it for amount of 21700 And then workers' comp for the village, 
Um, current budget is $23,500. We're removing, um, deducting. The, the invoice came in and it came in less than we budgeted. So that amount of $6,595, bringing the, the revised budget to $16,905. That reflects our actual amount. Uh, now, therefore, be resolved that the Village of Reddick amends the general fund budget as shown in the charts above. Um, would someone like to make a motion? I would like to make a motion. And do I hear Pass a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Resolution number three passes. And just a reminder, our next meetings, the workshop meeting is on January 26th. I believe that's a Thursday um, and at 7 o'clock. And the village board, next village board meeting meets on February 13th. And I'd like to move now to department and committee reports. And we'll start with the treasurer's report. Ray. Certainly, yeah. Mike here. <clears throat> yeah, the uh, treasurer's report, uh, January 9th, 2023. Our account balances as of the end of December 2022 are as follows: the general fund, nine hundred four thousand nine hundred sixty-five dollars and seventeen cents. The water fund, two hundred twenty-five thousand one hundred seventy-nine dollars and eighty-seven cents. Payroll clearing account, $31,589.46. Sewer fund, $24,055.94. Hard scrabble, $9,455.60. Village green, $7,674.32. Health insurance, $5,505.89. And petty cash, $30.83. Our reserve checking balances are as follows. Fire Department, $5,035.22. Police, $14,590.60. USDA, $134,083.29. Highway, $29,126.86. Snow Reserve, $3,280.53. Tower Reserve, $17,717. Unemployment, $4,545.57. Court reserve, $3,299.63. And office reserve, $972.83. Our monthly expenses for the month of December 2022 are as follows. General fund, $272,129.59. Water fund, $22,899.96. Payroll clearing account, $4,283.32. And sewer, $722,320.99. And that represents most of the disbursement of funds uh, for the sewer project, our 10th uh, disbursement from EFC. Great. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, sir? Any questions from the board? I can make a motion that we accept the treasurer's report as presented. Do I hear a second, please? I'll second. Charlie Lang seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, treasurer's report is accepted. Read the village police monthly reports. Um, incidents, we had 302 incidences. There were 182 in the village of Red Hook, 102 in the town of Red Hook, and 18 in the village of Tivoli. Water tower security checks, we, we had 108. Uniform traffic tickets, we had 88 total. 43 of those were in the village of Red Hook. 
31 in the town of Red Hook and 14 in the village of Tivoli. Parking tickets, we had four in the village of Red Hook, nine in the village of Tivoli, and two in the town of Red Hook. We had six total arrests, of which two were from the village of Red Hook, two from the town of Red Hook, and two from the village of Tivoli. And if I can just pipe in, um, I have not received a um, report from the fire department yet. Yes, we did. So, oh, you did, okay. Yeah, Mr. Fry dropped it off prior to the meeting. So it's, it's waiting for your arrival back in the village building. You can probably just mention the total number of incidents if you have it. I could read it. I the total number on the bottom. So the total incident count was 63. That was in the town. And then the total incident report for the village of Radica is 23. Gotcha. So 23 for the village and 63 for the town of Red Hook. Or outside the village. Great to see. And then just on the personnel side, um, Lori Urban, our new part time bookkeeper, who is on, who's listening in, um, her first day was today. So please welcome Lori. We're thrilled to have her. That's it for me. Um, I'll read my monthly reports. This is the um, start out with the Village Green Committee's monthly report. The current balances of the Village Green Committee's related budget accounts as of December 31st are as follows. Community beautification, we have a negative $995.40. And we should be getting $1,000 back from the New York State Urban Forestry Council grant award, which will compensate that that deficit shade tree contractual is seven hundred dollars and the village green committee's checking account we have a balance of seven thousand six hundred and seventy four dollars and thirty two cents yeah wait a minute in the village of highway, the village of Red Hook Highway Department monthly reports, the village highway department is no longer picking up brush, leaves, or yard debris. Brush pickup services will resume in the spring of 2023. The village highway department will pick up Christmas trees beginning Tuesday, January 3rd, and continuing each following Monday until January 30th. Residents are reminded to place trees curbside and not in streets or roads. The village's seasonal all night parking law is currently in effect as of November 1st, 2022 through March 31st of 2023. No parking is permitted on village streets from 11 o'clock p.m. to 6 o'clock a.m. and on New York State highways, which would be Broadway and Market Street from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. When snow or ice removal operations are underway, any vehicle parked or abandoned on any street may be removed by or under the direction of the Red Oak Police Department, or any responding law enforcement agency. Costs associated with vehicle towing and storage will be charged to the vehicle's owners. And now we know how much that is. And um, please don't do it. Save you some money. The Highway Department requests that property owners remove street side athletic equipment such as basketball hoops, garbage receptacles, and other temporary obstacles from the sides of streets to prevent damage during snow removal operations. And the owner and or occupant of every building or lot in the village with an adjoining sidewalk shall remove snow and ice within 24 hours of a snowstorm. At the direction of the mayor and or board of trustees, the village highway department may remove snow and ice left uncleared at a cost of $2 per linear foot. This cost will be assessed and collected with the next tax levy. The Village Board of Trustees should also consider replacing signs that post the Village's snow ordinance with a posting of the Village's seasonal all-night parking law. As per Local Law 4 of 619-2014, Section 190-28, 190-28B. 
and revenue from the sale of scrap metal was received on November 16th in the amount of $430.80. Total revenue generated from the sale of scrap metal in fiscal year 2022-23 is $2,715. Since inception of the scrap metal recycling program in December of 2007, $46,578.46 has been generated. And proceeds from this program go toward the purchase of tools and equipment for the Village Highway, Water, and Materials Management Department. Residents and businesses interested in donating scrap metal may contact the Village Highway Department at 845-758-8600 or the Village Clerk's Office, and the Highway Department personnel will assist property owners by picking up scrap metal upon request. Uh, my next report would be the Red Hook Infrastructure um, and Intermunicipal Task Force monthly report. The Red Hook Sewer Project, we had meetings on December 2nd, 16th, 23rd, and 30th. There's a whole lot of information. I'll just try to cut to the chase of where we are as of December 30th. Uh, so far, 85 tanks have been placed, and that includes 81 septic tanks and four grease traps. Um, four tanks had been tied into the sewer as of December 30th, and this is fully operational. Wastewater treatment plan is running, and these systems are up and operational on at least four properties. I think there's been more that's been hooked up, but we have our follow-up meeting this Friday on the 13th, so... Stay tuned for further updates. Um, the manufacturer of the pumps, um, we're in to um, go over with the operator how these will be worked. We're also looking at them to come back and inform the highway department and the operator on how proper maintenance should happen on annual and um, various schedules and also a pumping schedule is being um, prepared at this time. So there's a lot more information. This is usually in what section? It's, it's after the minutes. So it's after the minutes, but it's posted online. So all those who really want to know what's going on with this thing, it's quite detailed. Um, please find it on the website. And the Village of Red Hook Water Distribution System Maintenance Improvement Project and Sewer Service Area Operating in maintenance procedures and protocols, we had meetings on December 2nd and 30th in the village of in the Red Hook Village building. Um, we discussed the status of the new SCADA computer. We did receive prices, um, both from Delaware Engineering and C3ND, who's our operator. Um, estimates from Teamworks for upgraded software, the approximate cost for the total package computer and software, is twenty five thousand um, dollars. We also met on the thirtieth to the to develop a wastewater distribution system utilizing the step system at the proposed Anderson Commons development on Baxter Street and Elizabeth Street. There'll be a new subdivision that's been in the works for well over fifteen years, um, and they've asked that and we've actually tried to encourage them to come on to the sewer system. Um, just to prevent any contamination of our well fields, which is adjacent to that going west. Um, we also reviewed and discussed the occurrence of cloudy water from individual property water services, and we will review and inspect the water quality from the treated source at the water treatment plant. And this will be conducted to determine the cause and propose a remedy. So there's something happening right at the, as the water comes out of the wells, it's treated, then as it comes into the distribution system, the clouds that happen. So we're testing that and see what, what that causes and try to remedy any situation. We also reviewed documents um, for the elevated water storage tank repainting project. We did get funding from the WIA grant for this. And we reviewed um, issues and proper functioning of water meters. Um, Jen Cavanaugh our clerk and water clerk is reviewing no use and low use readings from existing water meters. We're testing gauge, test to gauge water consumption at these meters and proper functioning of meters will be tested by C3ND in the village highway department. 
and there were no meetings of the intermunicipal task force this month. Some other committee meetings or committees that I sit on in the town, um, the Town of Red Oaks Zoning Review Committee, there were no meetings, Community Preservation Fund Advisory Board, no meetings, the current balance of the Community Preservation Fund as of December 31st, 2022, is three million four hundred and fifty two thousand eight hundred and thirty four dollars and fourteen cents. There were no meetings of the Salkeel Watershed Community, um, no meetings of the Town of Radic Local Waterfront Revitalization Plan, and no meetings of the Northern Dutchess Alliance Executive Committee. There was a informal meeting of the Village of Radic Zoning Review Committee, both Karen Smythe and myself um, discussed, um, this was on December 23rd, in the Village Building, a proposed traditional neighborhood district, which we do have a draft uh, law that was drafted in 2007 for the purchase of development rights, transfer of development rights, and highest and best land uses for a property in the northern section of the village. And we had a meeting of the Village of Reddick Public Spaces Initiative, or PSI, and both Declan and I are co-liaisons of that. A meeting was held on December 10th. At the community center, um, we, the PSI volunteers planted 150 bulbs, expecting to bloom from early spring through June of 2023. The PSI committee reviewed the seed common space at the community center. The seed information will be updated in additional advertising through Instagram at community center flyers will help community be more aware of this area in the community center. Um, Richard M. Abraham's Memorial Oval Park, a professional to assist in developing a master plan of the park with possible assistance from the Bard College Architecture Department and the Bard College Horticulture Guild was discussed. We also discussed improving the village's walkability, lighting, public spaces, and pedestrian-friendly atmosphere. Also discussed was a possible collaboration with the Reddick Town Trails Committee for connections between the Reddick Village and the Reddick Town Parks, sidewalks, and multimodal transportation. We also discussed the Art Box Walk Tour and continuing expansion of future art projects and discussed the potential collaboration with the Reddick High School the Reddick Village Public Spaces Initiative, Bard College, and the Community Center to consider a seed ball workshop and or project. And that's all I have on my reports. Um, Trustee Lang, we please, if you will, materials management or water. Yes, I would be glad to. Um, so, uh, the monthly material management report for the month of December. Um, we process 0.97 tons of commingled, uh, 0.55 tons of cardboard, 0.89 tons of paper for a total recycling volume of 2.41 tons. And that was combined with, well not combined, but sent to the facility together with 3.05 tons of garbage. Um, total costs for the garbage, unfortunately, there was no contaminated recycling again this past month, so that's, that's great news. The total cost was $365.09, and we uh, generated $2,454 in uh, tags sold in the month of December. Hopefully that number's correct. <coughs> um, so that's materials management. And then moving on to the water treatment facilities monthly report. During the month of December, the water treatment facility treated 6,492,500 total gallons, which is an average of 209,400 gallons per day. Um, that's right in line with the past couple of months, so that's uh, a, a good level to be at. Um, and I think, you know, it's promising that it's staying there. Uh, we also sent three bacteriological samples for testing, uh, and they all came back 
uh, absent of coliform or E. coli bacteria. And then during the month of December, the water treatment plant used 75 gallons of sodium hypochlorite, uh, and that comes to an average daily use of 2.4 gallons per day. Um, there are a small number of uh, outstanding issues in the water system that are being addressed or uh, in need of uh, being evaluated. You mentioned the, there was a, a cloudiness issue, Brent, that we're looking into. Yep. We received several concerns you know, from uh, our customers, so we're looking into that. Uh, and we have that new SCADA system in place. Soon to be. Right. Um, otherwise, I mean, there's a few uh, outstanding issues on the wastewater system side of things. Um, and the good news with that is, is that because the new plant is up and running, we'll be able to transfer the loads from that plant to the new plant, the old plant to the new plant. Right. So we can do uh, much needed evaluations much, of much what, deferred what's there. maintenance on the old plant. Yeah, hopefully right. not a lot, but we want to have the ability to inspect it and evaluate right. what needs to be done. Yeah, that will be a, a great help. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. Now, Corka, if you would please. So. Um, Red Hook Together, the Red Hook Together monthly meeting was not held for the month of January, so I don't have any updates on that. Red Hook's Town Economic Development Committee, the biweekly meetings were postponed for the month of January and will resume this week on Wednesday, January 11th at 8.40 a.m. at Village Hall. The Village of Red Hook Communications Committee, the Communications Committee meets every first Wednesday of the month at 1.30 p.m. in the Village Hall conference room. Our meeting this month was a working session where we reviewed progress on goals set at an earlier meeting. So there's no particular updates there. Um, Village of Red Hook Hard Scrabble Events Committee. The Events Committee would like to congratulate the Village of Red Hook's Highway Department for winning the tree competition at the Episcopal Church with their clever tree design modeled after an orange traffic cone. The monthly meeting was canceled for the month of December, and since the third Monday of this month, January 16th, falls on Martin Luther King Day, our monthly January meeting will be moved to the fourth Monday of the month, January 23rd, at 7 p.m. No, 6 p.m., I'm sorry. Apologize. Um, Village of Red Hook Human Relations Committee. The committee meets every first Thursday of the month at 7 p.m. in the Village Hall Conference Room. This month's meeting focused on the details around the Inside Out We Are Neighbors public art project. There was also a discussion on how bias and harassment inc incidences in the community could and should be reported and logged in order to track trends and allocate resources appropriately. Further research is underway in the goal of creating an educational guide for community members that may experience or witness bias or harassment incidents. The Red Hook Public Library Report. The library is pleased to announce that they launched their new fine free policy. The library will no longer collect late fees for most items borrowed from the library. Late fines will only apply to physical items that require pre-bookings, which are empire passes, canopies, and portable batteries, as well as items that are owned by other libraries that still collect <coughs> late fines. Additionally, Don Jardine, the director of the Red Hook Public Library for the past six years, is leaving her position as of February 28th, 2023. And the board of the library has officially begun a search for the new director. And that um, was posted online just this last week and is on social media. So. You may have to ask a question, Melquaca? Yeah, please. So the Inside Out, We Are Neighbors Public Art Project, what, what is that? It's going to be a portrait po project. We're going to be taking portraits of different um, community members in the village. And then we are going to um, display them at one of the neighbors' nights in the summer. And the idea is that everyone will take takes a stand behind a message and the message is that we all live together and we depend on each other for community um and it's a it's a project that is there is a um a french photographer named jr and he has done this this project all over the world where he provides free printing 
So you get the, it's of no cost to the village other than us actually figuring out a way to hang them on strings. But um, it's, it's a neat way of getting everyone involved and, and uh, seeing the faces of our neighbors. Great. Thank you. I have a very quick question. Um, did the Economic Development Committee, it says 8.40 a.m. It used to be 8.30. Yes, that's because my children get picked up by the bus at 8.30 a.m. And in order to get here to open up the, if you can open it up every morning, it will be 8.30. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. I thought I was misreading. Perfect. And Trustee Dwyer McNulty for the zoning planning report. Yeah. Okay. Um, there were six building permits issued, uh, one certificate of occupancy, one certificate of compliance, zero municipal searches, zero orders to remedy, no stop work orders, no court appearances, no fire inspections. There was one complaint in the month of December 2022. Um, on December 8th, the planning board met. Um, they tabled a site plan and public hearing for 3 St. John Street until January 12th, 2023. Uh, and they approved a site plan for 90 West Market Street. The Zoning Board of Appeals did not meet in December 2022 due to no agenda. Um, in the month of December, the building department received $1,118.60 in uh, building permit fees and site plan applications, fire inspections, and yep, that was it. Great. All right, thank you. Thank you, Declan. Um, that pretty much wraps up our committee meetings and monthly reports. Um, is there any additional new business from the, the board before I open up to public comment? Hearing none, I'd like to open up the, the meeting for public comment. Anyone interested? Um, hearing none, um, we've already done our executive session. I'd like to make a motion to pay bills after audit. Do I hear a second? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 And I believe we are done for the evening, so. Sticking to tradition, I would like to make a motion to adjourn this evening's meeting on uh, the January 9th, 2023 Village of Red Hook Board of Trustees meeting. Um, do I have a second? I'll second that motion. All in favor? Just quick, wait, just quick, quick discussion. I just wanted to say a big thank you to Brent for uh, taking over for me this evening. My so, privilege. Feel better. And he got it in an hour. Very nicely yeah. done. No, really. Maybe, maybe Brent should take over more often. <laughs> no, no. I had my chance, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, did we vote? Do we all say aye? We vote. Aye. 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 Yes. Aye. With a strong aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. <laughs>